The first non-negotiable cardinal pillar of the EFF, expropriation of land without compensation. Yeah. So what do you make of, do you think that you are unreasonable to ask for expropriation of land without compensation? Is that something that you believe in as a human being? As an but I wholly endorse that position. It falls within the constitution. And, and sorry, EFF is not advocating violence to no, the best of my knowledge. Yeah, we're not. So I would support any constitutional means in terms of which we will get our land back. And the position of EFF, which is expropriation without compensation, is entirely justified. JP, uh, people will come and say, but what are you going to do with the land? Uh, such questions. How do they evoke your emotions? And how if I steal your, your computer right now and keep it to myself, can it be open to me that, no, no, we don't need this computer. We're not doing anything. It can never justify that. It can never. I see. So, JP, you will know that, you just said it earlier on, that at the center of the struggle yes. is the land. That's right. Which became or becomes the first non-negotiable cardinal pillar of the EFF, expropriation of land without compensation. That's right. And you will know that the EFF, we've attempted several times in parliament to pass motions for the expropriation of land without compensation, which is the last one. It went even beyond just being the motion. It went to through the country, through um, public hearings that confirmed what we actually stand for and agree with you and me that we need to expropriate land without compensation. But of course, we went back to parliament and the ANC, known for who they are, they sold out. Uh, when it comes to the actual amendment of Section 25 of the Constitution. So what do you make of, do you think that you are unreasonable to ask for expropriation of land without compensation? Is that something that you believe in as a human being, as an African? Yes, I believe in that wholeheartedly. And the position adopted by EFF is definitely not unreasonable. If anything, it is in line with the Constitution. I've just outlined the history of the Constitution, yeah. the preamble, and I've identified three categories of land that can today be expropriated in terms of the law of general amendment. The Criminal Procedure Act, that was with reference to farmers who commit crime on their farms. I've also made reference to compensation, how that land was acquired. All of that falls within the Act. To the extent that some might think that is not good enough, then there might be a need to amend Section 25. But I come from the school of thought that Section 25, as it stands, is okay, we can work with it, right? So you don't need, in my view, to amend the Constitution, but obviously we would need a specific act of parliament to deal with such expropriations if, uh, if necessary. But I wholly endorse that position. It falls within the Constitution. And, and, and sorry, EFF is not advocating violence to no, the best not. of my knowledge. Yeah, we're not. So I would support any constitutional means in terms of which we'll get our land back. And the position of EFF, which is expropriation without compensation, is entirely justified. We're not um, 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 promoting violence. That's why we went back to the same parliament That's that passed right. that law yes. to say we, we see that there's an injustice here, there's a shortage, a, a shortfall somewhere, mm. and therefore let's amend the constitution mm. to cater for expropriation of land without compensation. Now, uh, JP, uh, people will come and say, but what are you going to do with the land? Uh, such questions. How do they evoke your emotions and how would you respond to such questions? Well, I've often seen that on social media there is a young lady, I think, concerned citizen. She talks quite a lot about land. And I listened to her once, and uh, what put me off was the Model C accent. You know, you can see this is a young South African who basically uh, doesn't know much about politics, right? My sister, can I... Uh, Sorry, Princess Mawutwe. May I ask Tiji. you this question? Can I ask you, Tiji, the following question? If I steal your your computer right now and keep it to myself, can it be open to me that no, 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 you don't need this computer. You're not doing anything about it. It can never justify that. It can never. Yes. So those fellow South Africans, especially young black people, 
who say we can't use land are misdirected. I mean, I can assure you one thing. A lot of people, myself, I have a small holding, if I may talk about it very yeah, briefly. you may. A small holding, in my small holding, is only 11 hectares. I don't need anything bigger than that. But I don't buy anything. The only thing I buy is toilet paper and toothpaste. So you produce everything Everything, in your ranging from bees, my own fish. I've got fresh feet in a dam. I've got sheep. I've got chickens. I reprocess everything. I don't buy fertilizer. That's enough to feed me and the family. In other words, the concept of small holding mm. or subsistence farming. That's what our grand great-grandfathers used, used to, to do. do. Yeah. And now everybody's talking about organic food, right? Meanwhile, we used to live like that before. We were colonized. And remember, there is the question of uh, money as well. Land goes hand in hand with the issue of money. Resources, yes. And resources, yeah. right? They don't want... For example, on my farm, I have basic herbs, African herbs, right? I don't buy spinach. I use impuya. You call it kale. Kale, right? Kale, yeah. It's there, right? I use pumpkin shoots. I use all of that. I don't buy cabbage from the store. I use my own. Now, in terms of medication as well, I'm lucky to have some background. I mean, I have African herbs. If I'm sick, I go to my garden and get umshonyane. Or riboza, then I will not be coughing the following day, mm. and the uh, the pharmacist is not about to see me. I see. <laughs> so, <laughs> Very interesting. <laughs> so, 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 where did we get it wrong, JP? Uh, that to this day, yes. we still have an expropriated land without compensation. That's one. But two, for those farms mm. whose government have given back to the community. Mm. They lie dormant now. Nothing is happening in those farms yes. because government has not had a deliberate uh, uh, effort or attitude to assist those communities. As you know, yes. back in apartheid, there used to be they capacitated, yes, capacitated financially skills, and yes. equipment-wise and and skills mm. to, to 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 farm and uh, you know. But that's not happening with the government of the day. So, wh where did we go wrong? Sorry. Before I answer that, I've just remembered another category of uh, land that yeah. can be expropriated without compensation. What happened in 1994, a lot of farmers who, were, who had loans uh, using the land bank, which was in place, stopped servicing those loans. Mm -hmm. right? But they live on those farms. You have a car, my sister. If you don't pay for your car, the bank will move in Reposit. and confiscate you. Yeah. But they are staying on those farms. That's their farm. So if we were to have proper audit, we'll be able to identify those farms. That's land that belongs to the state. We mm. can go on and on. Yeah. But uh, the issue of proper land audit is being resisted in South Africa. Right? So that's just one category. Mm. Nobody can deny it. If you don't pay for your house, uh, the bank will move in, yeah. you foreclose. And take it. Why can't those farms be confiscated? You don't need to, conf uh, to, 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 to compensate them. Now, to answer the question, your question, my view is simply this. It doesn't help to give a farm to Mr. So-and-so or so-and-so simply because he is a lawyer or a doctor or whatever. Farming is very, very involved. You need to capacitate our yeah. Transfer of skills is very, very important. And I regret 30 years down the line after independence, there hasn't been much transfer of skills. And I think if you just take a community and say, here is your land, have it back, you are setting people for failure. There is a farm that I know, for example, in KZN, they asked me to assist. They want to convert it into a game farm. They got the community there, got 5,000 hectares of land. Mm. Of the 5,000 hectares of land, 3,000 hectares has already been leased back to the whites mm. who lived there exactly. before. Yeah. They are carrying on because they've got the skill, they've got cattle, they've mm. got sugar cane. So when I got there, the family, this community asked me, they want to start a game farm. So they gave me the 2,000 hectares that I could work with. But obviously, I don't want to go much into those details. It was very clear to me that they were set up for fail. Mm. And I ended up asking them questions. Why are you listening back 
these sugarcane farms back to whites. Mm. The answer was, what are we going to do? Yeah. We don't have the capacity. They have the skill. They have the money. They have the know-how. So my view is this. It's not helpful to give the land back to various communities yeah. without capacitating those communities, Absolutely. without the transfer of skill. I'm just using farming yeah. as an example. Mining gets more complicated, right? And remember, every African is a farmer. There's yeah. no question about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. We all know how to farm. We all have hoes. We know. The only difference is that the white man uses more science. It's more scientific, mm. right? It's like hunting. You use a, a gun now instead of using spears and dogs. But the fundamental principles are exactly the it's same. There you have it, guys. Our African leaders try to do their best, you know, in their speeches and try to make speeches that actually to show, you know, their efforts in trying to help uh, manage the challenges which Africa is actually facing through and has been facing through since the colonial times. And so we here to really listen to these speeches and um, to share our thoughts in the comments. And so whatever it is you guys think about these speeches, please do share your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please share and like and subscribe because that's the way you support Kwasami as a channel, an Afrocentric channel, uh, where we try to understand um, deeper issues in African history and hopefully develop um, a collective intelligence on how we wish to build the Africa we want to see as people of Africa. See you in the next one.